Now let's continue with example 4.7 by investigating the phase modulation. So for phase modulation, let's consider this signal, which looks like a digital signal. It's a pulse that goes from positive one to negative one. And what we're given is the derivative of the message in this case. So let's find the following. Let's find the angle of the modulated signal. Let's find the minimum and maximum instantaneous frequency. And let's find the modulated uh, signal for the phase modulated case. Now remember, usually it's easy to find the angle of the phase modulated signal. However, because we're given the derivative of the message, this time it will be easier to find the instantaneous frequency for phase modulated signal than it is to find the angle. So let's see why that is. So if we're given, if we want to find the angle of the phase modulated signal, normally it would look like this. We would find theta t equals the carrier frequency multiplied by time plus some constant plus the constant kp multiplied by the message. But recall, this time we don't know what the message is. We just know what the derivative of the message is. So normally it's easy to find the angle because phase modulation linearly modulates the angle. And again, we'll just consider the constant theta naught to be equal to zero. Since we don't know what the message is, well, we would need to use an integral on the derivative of the message in order to find the message. So that means for this case, if we want to find the angle theta t, we are going to need to take the integral of our message. If we took the integral of this message, we would get this as one possible, if we took the integral of the derivative of the message, we would get this triangle wave as one possible message. This triangle wave comes if we assume that the message at time equals zero is equal to zero. So if we want to find the minimum and maximum instantaneous frequency, this time it's actually going to be easy because normally it's a little bit difficult to find the instantaneous frequency for a phase modulated signal because we need to find the derivative of the message. However, this time we were given the derivative of the message, which is shown in this graph here. So the instantaneous frequency is the derivative of the angle. If we find the derivative of the angle, we can see that this is the carrier frequency plus kp, a constant related to the phase modulation, multiplied by the derivative of the message. In this case, we're in luck because we know the derivative of the message already. That means that to find the instantaneous frequency in hertz, we can just divide by two pi. So the minimum instantaneous frequency, we can substitute the minimum value of the uh, derivative of the message, which is minus one, and the maximum, which is positive one. So this means that we go from five hertz to 15 hertz. And so our instantaneous frequency graph is going to look something like this, going from 15 hertz at the maximum to five hertz at the minimum. So really we can expect that the modulated signal is only going to have two different frequencies because we can see from the instantaneous frequency graph that the frequency is either 15 hertz or five hertz. So if we find the signal, the phase modulated signal, which is some amplitude multiplied by cosine of the theta t, and we found that our theta is going to be the carrier frequency multiplied by time plus an integral of the derivative of the message, we can see that the angle is going to look like this graph on the right. Now, if we look at this, it's a line that, that keeps bending and kind of twisting, but what we see is that there's only two slopes that the line has when we look at the angle. The angle graph with respect to time only has two different slopes. So that means that the phase modulated signal, when we find that, is going to be a cosine wave that just has two different frequencies. And so if you look and compare the angle in the phase modulated signal, we can see when the slope of the angle is steeper, we have a higher frequency in our phase modulated signal. And that, and you can see that 
during times 0 to 0 0.5. And then at time 0 0.5, we can see that the slope of the angle becomes much less. And we know that's 5 from our, our previous slide. And from 0 0.5 to 1, we can see that the phase modulated signal is much more spread out. And that's because the frequency is lower. The frequency is 5 there. So where the phase modulated signal has a higher frequency from 0 0.5, it's kind of bunched up. And then from 0 0.5 to 1, the frequency is lower. And we can see that the graph is more spread out. If we compare all of these at once, we can see for the phase modulated signal, uh, one possible message would be the integral of that derivative, which would be some triangle wave. And then the instantaneous frequency is going to be constantly just jumping from 15 to 5. There is no other values of the instantaneous frequency besides 15 or 5. And that is reflected in the phase modulated signal at the very bottom, where we can see that there, the, the signal goes from being more bunched up to being more spread out. And that's where the, the frequency is jumping from 15 to 5, up to 15 again, and then back down to 5. And if we look at the angle, we can see again that the angle, the slope of the angle, there's only two different slopes that the angle has. So from 0 to 5, we can see that the line is steeper. And that's where the instantaneous frequency is 15. And then from 0 0.5 to 1, it gets a little bit more flat. That's where the instantaneous frequency is 5. Then it gets steeper again, then flatter, and so on.